march for McCrag. Giant Imperial God Machines, a voracious swarm of terrifying Tyranid monstrosities. Can the Ultramarines hold back the Tyranid Tide? Welcome to Tabletop Titans. Welcome to the Apocalypse! Thanks for joining us on this special edition as we play through Games Workshop's new edition of Apocalypse. We wanted to give this event all the weightiness that it deserved, so we built a massive table of custom terrain and arrayed two humongous armies to duke it out apocalypse style. The stalwart forces of the Ultramarines, led by Marnius Kalgar and featuring Robo Gilliman with a support contingent of a Reaver and Warlord Titan, face off against three, count them, three Bio Titans, led by the old Swarmlord himself. I can't wait to see how Kalgar and company fare against Swarmlord and his throng of teeth. This is Apocalypse! Our Tyranid side will be played by Brent and Moovin, both longtime bug players. They've arrayed eight detachments, including three Bio Titans, led by the Swarmlord, and even have Old One Eye in there as well. Moobit is actually our first ever patron on Patreon, and we are super happy to have him here on the channel. I'm Brent, I'm from Vancouver, play 40K. Uh, I'm Moobin, I live in the Lower Mainland as well. Tyrants are like me, they're always hungry. So it's perfect. It was a perfect army for choice, and we're just gonna come in and eat everything. In your face, lots of dice, just hand-to-hand -hand combat, it's great. <laughs> we're serious. Go ahead. We're, we're serious. We're serious, now we're, we're yeah. for real. We're we're gamers. <laughs> okay. The Ultramarines will be played by Steve and Tycho of Play on Tabletop, and their army consists of nine detachments, including a Warlord and a Reaver Titan, as well as two Astraea Super Heavy Tanks and an Imperial Knight. They have Marnius Kelgar leading the charge along with the master of Ultramar himself, Roboot Gulliman. We are here to play Apocalypse. It, it gives me a little quiver inside to come to the table with this weight. Of, of model with us. Uh, I, I have never played with models of the stature and it was uh, a true honor to be part of this. I've never played a Titan. Never. I was the most excited for today because I have never played a Titan ever because you can't fit it in a normal game ever. A Warlord Titan is what, 40K is 10,000 points? Like, you never play that in regular 40K. This epic battle is being played on two six by four tables, though we could have gone to three for this size of game or even more, as the armies arrayed before us are just massive. We'll table them. We'll table them. They, they, got, two, they got two models. What else do they got? They got a bunch of things that are killing normal 40 k units, right? Basically, they've just got two big, bio or big, two big titans and then a bunch of biomass for us to devour. It's perfect. We were looking yeah. for a snack. I think we found it. It's, it's daunting and almost overwhelming. I don't think we, I, I don't think we brought enough guns. Action! All right, well, Welcome uh, to the apocalypse! Oh my That's god. Good. I'm so excited. So, okay, so we're the defender because you have more power level than us. Yes, we do. By five, uh, right? What's the power levels we're going on here? Six something? And... Uh, no, it's uh, five, they have 582 and we're 570. Let's do this, 1200 points on the. Oh, this brings so, back memories, it's great. They've rolled Drawn and Quartered as a mission and have placed four objective markers on the table. These are worth one victory point to the team that holds more at the end of the turn. However, should they each hold equal objectives, they will both get a point. Deployment, the players are using a classic Dawn of War setup. Nothing fancy here, just old fashioned slobber knocker 40K style. Our first detachment, Italian detachment of Ultramarines that have three infiltrator units, a Phobos Lieutenant and a Phobos Captain. Okay, we will start off with the battalion of uh, Broodlord and Do lots of gene stealers. I was gonna say, let's start the Moloch off in deep strike. Let's have him tunnel. That's a lot of gene stealers. <laughs> this guy's a stubber, that helps. Ooh, <laughs> what you're saying is the Knight Gallant has a stubber, so we'll be fine. <laughs> that makes it okay. Steven, it'll be that stubber that takes out a bio titan, just you watch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is a one battalion, we're go or good to go. Super heavy auxiliary detachment, one Knight uh, Errant, I believe? No, Gallant. With a heavy uh, stubber. With, a, with, with the heavy stubber. Oh my goodness. 
Oh my goodness. Those Hierophant Bio Titans, their biggest goal is to just sit back, keep, and just punch a hole into anything they see. Um, they've got dire bio cannons. They can take a little bit of damage to improve their uh, wound rolls. And that's what we're gonna do. Uh, so we are going to deploy a spearhead detachment of ultramarines with two squads of suppressors. Apocalypse aims to take a much larger view of the battlefield by acting in detachments rather than by individual unit or even model. An easy way to think of it is that a 40K is to Apocalypse what Kill Team is to 40K. Three great systems with three distinct but familiar rule sets. Let's do it, it's happening right now. Let's go. It's happening right now, let's do it. Warlord Titan down. Yeah, I think this is a good spot. I don't know, it was better when it was off on, the table. On, I'm not sure, this way? Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah, he wants Maybe to face this? them. It does look like I'm carrying like- It a is a small child. I can't believe they put those Titans in our 48 inch range. They have 360 inch, we have 48. We're in there. Your big guys have transport capacity. Is there anybody inside? No, we haven't put anybody inside. Do the Bio Titans have a transport They have a transport capacity! capacity. Robo girly man. Holy shnikey, that's a lot of bugs. Um, it, it, it was a lot. I have never seen this many bugs across the table for me ever, and uh, I'm kind of scared of Tyranids in general. I play Imperium, I look at it and I know exactly what it is. With Tyranids, I look across and I'm like, I don't know what any of this is. Like, what, what is this name, what is that? There's so many of them, they're all blending together. Like, it's, it's daunting. One of the things that's different about Apocalypse, you may notice, is how the players are always involved. There are no long waits for phases where one side is doing all the work. There's an I go, you go aspect that really makes you feel the strategic level of gameplay, and you're much more removed from the individual damage scale of uh, normal 40k. That coupled with damage occurring all at once at the end of the turn really makes the big guns valuable, and orders and activations become very important when you activate. As tying up a unit in combat that is taking, for example, the, the take aim order is a real possibility and limits any response that they can make. Let's do this, Steve. Three. Eight. You have initiative. There is the roll for initiative, and it looks like the Tyranid side is gonna be going first. We're gonna pass up on reinforcements. In Apocalypse, there are only four phases to the turn. Initiative, orders, action, and damage. Right. So we get one to start off for an army. Yep. We have seven warlords on the table. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And extra one for Swarm Lord. Yep, and extra one for the other Hive Tyrant. And the other Hive Tyrant. So we're at maxed out at 10 immediately. We have six. We have six plus an additional one for Gilliman. Okay. And then on a four up, because of Kalgar. Kalgar might give us another one. On a d6? Yeah. I'm rolling this oh, one. Kalgar! Yeah. yeah! So that gives us an eight. Eight, yeah. So command assets are unique to Apocalypse. You make a deck of 30 cards prior to the game start and draw cards based on the number of detachments on the, on the table as well as Warlords and Warmasters. Certain characters get extra as well and they can be played whenever instructed to on the cards. They include things like shooting protocols, psychic powers, or defenses. Once you've cycled through that deck of, of the discards, they're shuffled back in and you continue to draw from the same deck for the rest of the game. A neat little aspect of Apocalypse is building the right deck could make or break your game. Orders. So commanders and attachments, we gotta put down our, yeah. so this one's going here. The three types of orders that exist in Apocalypse are take aim, advance, and assault. Take aim is simple, you stand there and shoot. Advance, you move, and then you can shoot or you can fight. And assault, double your move and fight at the end. Food Lord and his big unit gonna do the assault. 
Jared Prime and his detachment's going advance. to advance. Malanthrope and his shooty bugs are going to take aim. Uh, Swarm Lord. And his bad boys are going to advance. Old One Eye and his Old posse yeah. going to assault as well. Um, big guys. Bio Titans are going to take aim. And Hive Tyrant and his squad are going to assault as well. For the Imperium, uh, the super heavy detachment is going to be uh, advancing. The Supreme Command detachment, so uh, Girly Man and his buds are uh, advancing. The Reva takes aim. Kalgar and his posse take aim. Librarian decides to aim his psychicness. Whoa, whoa. Uh, the Warlord Battle Titan takes aim. Uh, his little buddy, the uh, Gallant. Gallant Knight, he's gonna charge. Hellblasters that are aiming. Yay. And we have uh, Phobos Marines that are dashing about and shooting things. Advance. So everything's been revealed, now we go straight into the action phase. So right now the mission has an orbital debris rule. So things are falling from the atmosphere and you have to pick a point in the battlefield and you roll a, a D6 for every unit within six inches of the point, subtracting one if it's a character. And on the result of a four up, they take a blast marker. For the, uh, for the Astraeus. For the Spartan. Yeah. For Gulliman himself on a five. Oh. No. Oh. For the Primaris left tenant. No. Captain in Gravis armor. No. no. For the Primaris librarian. <laughs> for the. I shouldn't be rolling this. No, for I the eight, uh, chapter ancient. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Boom. Marine. For the tech marine. Nope. No. Uh, for the first Redemptor Dreadnought. For the other Redemptor Dreadnought. No. For the Repulsor. Repulsor! No. For the one unit that is within six of the aggressors. Oh my okay, god. You so. should roll all the time. Brent has rolled as effectively as always. That was a bit of a bust on their part. What do you think? I trust you, follow your muse. All right. And just a warning, we're probably gonna do it twice. <laughs> I see how it is. I see how it is. You know what? No, we're going to orbital strike you too. And at that moment, I'm just sitting there and I'm terrified because I know that's going to be a lot of damage on a lot of key units and I don't want them gone. Okay. Trying to fetch one. No. Trying to fetch two. Oh, yeah. It's on a D12. So on a seven to 10, one blast marker, 11 plus, two blast markers. Maliceptor uh, takes a blast. Carnifex takes a blast. Old One Eye takes a blast. Bio Titan takes a blast. Toxicrine takes nothing. Hive Tyrant. And then the Hive Tyrant takes nothing. That was our command asset. Sweet. So we're gonna be using an Apocalypse command asset as well nice. for laser burn. Ooh. What does that mean? <laughs> I have no idea. It just sounds awesome. What are they doing? You want to read it out? Laser burn. This command asset can be used in the action phase. When you select two points on the battlefield that are within 12 inches of each other, draw an imaginary straight line one millimeter thick in between these two points and roll a d12 for each unit that crosses a line. Subtracting one, if the unit it being rolled is a light character on a seven plus, they take a blast marker. It's just like, it's just, everything's falling from the sky. Have we moved anything yet? Imagining like a stream of bile that fell from the sky. Exactly, it's a stream of bile. That yeah. makes more sense. Yeah. Or, or our guys missed. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they did, it's going to be hitting the Astraeus, the Spartan, uh, Girly Man. Let's start with the Astraeus. No, for the Spartan. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing this either, apparently. Lieutenant. <laughs> Yeah, Lieutenant Dan takes a blast marker. You repulsor. No. All right, that was uh, ineffective. Activating. All right. All orders are down and now they are revealed and the Tyranids with the initiative get the first activation as we move into the action phase. Let's cool. do the Carnifexes first. All right. We'll activate so. the Carnifexes that are gonna move twice. Seven. 14, because they move twice. No, I know. I just wanted the seven, because oh, okay. I don't have the super long arms. It's nice to have a six and a half footer on each team in Apocalypse. It makes reaching the center of the table a little bit easier. 
that is our first detachment down. Okay, so that's um, two units of infiltrators blasting away at the uh, gene sealers. So first infiltrator squad, five models strong. Ballistic skill three up has, I think it's just one shot, isn't it? Yep, it's just one shot. All right. Missed. They're also negative one to hit because of the venom throats. Next unit opens, hitting on the four. Yeah. Nope, fails to wound. We have a lieutenant around. Uh, it doesn't have any guns. Lieutenant doesn't? No, they don't have any guns. Yeah, like they just don't have, they, the primary lieutenant just doesn't have any guns. doesn't have a gun. Okay, so that's the shooting of that unit. Your turn. Yeah. Yeah? Do they All have, right. What's the range? Uh, well, they've got 36. They also target from the building because they're garrisoning, which means, oh yeah, they've got a nice healthy amount of targets there. Sounds good. So we got these two. So we've got them, we've okay. got the exocrine, and we've got the hive guard. Uh, so let's start with the hive guard. Let's yeah. do one unit at a time. So we're gonna get our spearhead to attack first. Six uh, hive guard shots. So the six okay. hive guard shooting, which I believe is 12 shots actually. It is 12 shots. It's right. two shots. Really? That's it? Uh, who do you want him to go into? I feel like with only two shots, do you want to take out the honor guard? Yeah, let's hit the honor guard with him. All right, honor guard it is. Two attacks into the honor guards. These are going to be on twos. Yeah, hit normally threes. But because we took aim, plus one, it's going to be on twos. And those are a six and a four. Both hit. Personnel, uh, four plus. That's a one and nine. Well, that's, one. that's one blast marker on the honor guard. Okay, into the honor guard to go. Into the honor guard, one blast marker. Trying to fetch. Three shots normally with the rupture cannon, but because they didn't move, they get to double their shot. All right, so the first one will shoot into the repulsor standing by the warlord titan. Threes because we took aim. Yep. All, All right. right, so everything but one. Oh uh, yeah, fours. All of them. Sweet. Five blast markers. Is it so, big so, or small so, blast? So uh, two so big and one small. Yep. Yeah. How many wounds did? How many wounds does the Repulsor have? Repulsor, Executioner or regular? Execution. The Repulsor Executioner has three wounds. Okay, yeah, yeah. shoot on something take else. The other one. Yeah. They'll take the other Repulsor. Yeah. Oh, right. you have guys in that Repulsor, don't you? Yeah, this one we have guys in. There's, yeah. There are three aggressors in there. I think, we, I think we popped those aggressors out of that little can. So, okay. he's gonna take his shots into that aggressor. Yep. Or not aggressor, uh, the Repulsor with the aggressors. Six on threes. All hit this time. And on fours again. Five. Five again. So two big blasts and a small blast again. Ouch. Those guys do nothing in normal 40 carry. <laughs> are you kidding me? They do fantastic for me. Wow, rupture cannons are amazing in Apocalypse. They've really, really put a hurt out in the Ultramarines. Ooh, those rupture cannons are brutal. They, they've caused some ruptures. I think the Titans have a target. <laughs> <laughs> So first unit of Hellblasters is gonna hit six shots from the Exocrine because he didn't move and he took aim, so he's gonna be hitting on threes. Threes, sounds like a plan to me. Ha, ah, that's a ones. And the two, no. The three on fours. Three. Can you live with this? Big and a small, right? Uh, one big, one small. That finishes that guy's turn. Firing squad's done. All right, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm just doing it. I'm oh, taking oh. the Warlord Battle Titan for a spin. So the Apocalypse Missile Launchers have Barrage and enough range to hit the parking lot. And uh, we're gonna pummel into uh, the closest squad of gene stealers. So the red ones or? The pink ones. Okay. 36 inch range on the R deck defense maulers. They are good against tanks. Both of those are gonna go directly into that exocrine. Oh, very good. So very the good. defense maulers, oh, very good, yes. The, both of my defense maulers are going directly into the exocrine. What's the next weapon? Two R Dex defense twin LAS cannon. Ooh, is it, is that what he's actually kitted with, or that's just, he's just listening to This is, this is what it has. R Dex defense or twin LAS cannon. The R Dex defense or twin LAS cannons. I'm gonna send them into the exocrine as well. Uh, then you have Bellicosa. Bellicosa? Volcano Bellicusa. cannons. We have two Bellicosa. How do you pronounce it? Uh, b beluga, uh. Okay, two beluga. okay, two beluga cannons directly into the first rupture cannon Tyran effect. All right, so let's start with these apocalyptic missile launchers into the pink gene stealers. Hey, on twos, I get a plus one. Oh, just minus one because these are shrouded, I believe. However, because I took aim, I get plus one, so we go back to twos. So on twos. Oh my, I hit seven times. Okay, with all of these eights, 
One, two, three blast markers to the pink jeans. So large and a small. All right, defense smallers into the exegrin, hitting on twos. Let's do it. I hit twice. <laughs> oh, okay. So two times. I hit uh, neither. Here we go. Four dice, uh, looking for twos. This looking for twos, on the let's do this. All of them. Exocrine's gonna this thing, die. Exocrine has taken four of these last cannon hits oh. to the face. On a five up. Boom. Uh, three. Okay, I shoot the I shoot the big ones. I shoot the big guns, big and I target ones. it back into the Tyrannophex. On twos. All hit. Okay, wounding on twos. On D12s. Four. <laughs> and wow. it's apocalyptic. And it's destroyer, meaning I believe it's four apiece. Four apiece. Yes. I mean, Apocalypse. how many actually wounded? Four. Four. Four wounded. So that's, so that's sixteen. A total, of, total, of total of eight, eight large. Eight, eight large eight. templates. Yep. Sorry, eight large blast markers go onto that. I, I might have overdone it, but it's fine. I think that's all their weapons. I must say, I, I really love this back and forth activation. It feels much more apocalyptic. It gives an epic feel to the battle being played. Absolutely loving the way that this works. So we're gonna activate this detachment next. Oh! Reaver Battle Titan. I told you. That's <laughs> fine. All right, so your Reaver Battle Titan is equipped with an Apocalypse Missile Launcher. It has a Reaver Laser Blaster, and it has a Reaver Melta Cannon. So we're going to send the Apocalypse Missile Launcher into the Pink Gene Stealers. We're going to send the Reaver Laser Blaster into the Wounded Bio Titan, and the Reaver Melta Cannon into the Wounded Bio Titan. And everything else in there. So, the Apocalypse Missile Launcher sends a barrage into your Gene Stealers, I say. Four dice, yes? Uh, yep, on twos. Three. Uh, sorry, what's this normal? Uh, it hits on twos, and then it gets plus one for take aim, and then minus one because of But there's also a building between him and... Doesn't matter, barrage out of line of sight. No, but it does affect your ballistic skill. It does, you would actually still hit on threes, that's true. So, two hits. Double ones, we wouldn't have done it anyways. So the Reaver Laser Blaster shoots three times and we shoot it into the Wounded Bio Titan. On three, on twos. Three. Okay, and now you're gonna be wounding it on fives. That's three. So this has the destroyer quality, so that means you take three large blast markers. Uh, moving along to the Melta Cannon, I get four shots. You get four shots. Hitting on twos. On two. Two, three hits. That's three wounds. Excellent, so it takes three large blast markers. I think the big guys need to go next. We're gonna shoot the big guys. So what do you wanna shoot at? And let's start off with the one in the back, since they're all one big unit. Um, I feel like that Reaver needs to take some punishment in kind. So he's gonna take his so two So maybe start with him into the big guy, since we're gonna do, and see how many we can put on there. And then leave him for last? Yeah. I like it. All right. Let's get this party started with the commander. He is hitting on threes. Take aim for twos. Do you want to frenzy metabolism him? You know what? I will like to go into a frenzy metabolism and him as well. We take a small blast marker to up the chances of wounding. Six on twos. So we got five. Um, we normally hit the big guys on, wound the big guys on a four. This time it's on a three because we took the damage to ourselves. Ooh, that's a lot of ones. I don't like it. Uh, he does, however, he does take three large blast markers. Three large. And then his friend next to him, I think she'll do the same thing. Yep. Hitting on twos. Twos. Oh, that's a couple ones. I don't like that. It's okay. But we're wounding him on threes. That's much better. Four, Four more large blast markers. Woo! To the Reaver. And the last one. He's gonna go ahead and take himself a blast marker as well. Hitting on twos yet again. And that's four more large blasts. On the Reaver? On the Reaver. Fantastic. Large blast on the Reaver. Fantastic. Three more than you put on him. Hey. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So what we'll do is we'll send the Heavy Bolter into the unit of Hormagons here. 
and the uh, and the main weapon will go into this card effect. C -c 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 Combo breaker. I'm taking your initiative. Seize the initiative Seize card. Seize the initiative card. I'm going to take over and uh, activate one of my detachments. And since you guys are deciding to activate one of your units, we're going to seize that initiative right back. And we're going to go next, like we should, Ooh. rightfully. Into the discard pile. Let's uh, go back to Swarmy, because he just said no. Swarmler is like, no, 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 no. Not today. No. No. So we're going to play a Tyranid High Fleet specific command asset. Ooh. And it's behemoth specific, which is appropriate. Hyper aggression. Change our um, order to assault. Sweet. Okay. So then we double then. Yes. Yep. Whoa. So he's okay. gonna move there. That's All fast. Right. You guys have turned. It's them now, it's their activation. We're gonna use uh, Adrenaline Lambs. Another so Tyranid asset. Up to three Tyranid High Fleet units in that detachment can make a free move action. And the Broodlord is going to take himself and his Gene Stealer buddies up that board. Can they, can they still charge after this? Oh, yeah. For our actual activation for the detachment, though, it's going to be the uh, Tyranid Prime with his warrior buddies and some zone throw. Uh, Kalgar's unit took aim. Uh, so what we'll do is we will send uh, the aggressor squads here and here. Both squads will go into that unit, the, the front unit of Hormagoth. So we're gonna activate our very last unit. Zoom, zoom, little buggy, zoom, zoom. Oh man, that's a 20 man unit too, isn't it? Yeah, they're both 20 man units. Oh, we got 10 attacks. Yeah. Okay, so this unit into them. On twos, seven. On sixes. Five blast markers. We're gonna go five into your lieutenant and then five into the unit. Two into the lieutenant. Four, two more big blasts into the unit that already has two big blasts. That's the end of our turn. Okay, so we are going to honor the chapter using this command asset. This command asset can be used in the action phase. When you select one Adeptus Astartes unit from your army, that unit makes one free fight action. Whilst making this action, you can reroll wound rolls for that unit's attacks. So we'll select the um, Infiltrator squad uh, that uh, was fighting the wounded gene stealers over here. Nothing, unfortunately. I guess they really didn't honor the chapter that hard. For the activation, I'm gonna activate the knight. He can go 24 inches and bash stuff. So the only thing in range that he can get to is the swarm lord. So he's gonna go bash the swarm lord. See how this is. Is this personnel or tanks? He's a tank. He's a tank. Let's do a thunder strike gauntlet because that wounds you on five. That's the only difference. That's three hits. That looks like two. 
Uh, and that would be two destroyers. So that's two large, two large blasts, blasts on the floor. He only has two wounds. We might have to use the double save on him. That is our entire action phases, all of them. All the phases. Both sides have completed their orders phase and we move on to the damage phase. Start of damage, the, uh, void, shields in, the right? void shields kick in and one large blast worker is removed from the Reaver Titan. So he's back down to 10. Yeah, you got to start with super heavies, but we're going to go ahead and pop one of the apocalypse psychic powers, which is Telkine Dome. We're going to drop that on the Swarm Lord so that when he's making his saving throws, he rolls on D12s, irrespective of size, uh, size of the blast marker. So that's for him. So he's got two larges. Okay, so we're going to pop another command asset, which is go to ground on this unit of Hormagons out front, which okay. lets them double their result for their safe rolls. So okay. let's so, start with the critically wounded one. Oh, let's go with the easy one. No, because he can roll boom. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the weaker ones then. Okay, so it's a D12 because it's, oh no, sorry. Yeah, it's a small blast marker. D12, three or better. Starting with the guy back here. Three or better. Come on, three or better. One. So he takes a wound. Takes the damage. Okay, uh, can I borrow two D12s? Because I have 10, count them, 10 uh, large blast markers uh, sitting here on this Reaver Battle Titan. The large blast markers? Five, huh? You need these sixes, sixes, my friend. Pardon me. Hard on me. Right here. You just kindly fail those. Uh, I did. Thank you. Just for you. All of them? All of them. Wow. What? Every single blessed yeah. last one yeah. of them. You fail all the saves with our Titan? Every single one. Seriously? Yeah. So you're taking how much damage? Uh, 10. Did it die? No, he's got 24 wounds. Oh, thank we didn't even We didn't even bracket him. Three, 10 and eight, or sorry, three and eight is 11, so he failed. So he he's a total of 11 damage. 11 damage. Still not bracketed. Nope. <laughs> no, he, how many wounds is he at? 24. Oh, never mind, I'm actually not that sad, that's fine. <laughs> The next Bio Titan. Need a three or better on a D12. He rolls exactly three. We have one small on a Spartan on a D12. Yeah, so I'd save the small with a 12. Yep. And so then I'll pick one on, up on this to save large. Three. Yeah. Does not, so he takes the damage. So for morale phase, you need to take into account how many blast markers you have, irrespective of size. Four, six, he's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus two. So it brings it up to eight. Ooh. Eight larges. D6 says, but they're only three or better. They're three ups, but you know, three ups are a fickle, fickle thing. For the critically wounded Bio Titan. Boom. Two. Fails two. Oh. Leadership with an and eight. And he does not need to take morale because he's standing right next to a synapse creature. Uh, this unit of infiltrators has got three large blast templates on it. Uh, and they have a five, a six up. Whoosh, nada. So they take three and they die. Is that first blood? I believe that is. Okay, Gene Shielder, leadership nine. So uh, the big oh, one fails. Oh, sorry. Oh, armor save nine. Big oh, one okay. fails. Other one fails. So they take two wounds. Okay. They have four. Okay. Uh, leadership two blasts plus oh. a D six. Oh yeah, they Brood Lord. Brood Lord nearby. So, they're so two fine. wounds. They just take the Synapse is very good. Synapse. Synapse is everything. Changes the game for the Turners. Uh, they, they're there, they're there to stay. Uh, so then this uh, this Lieutenant, six, whoosh. Uh, Primaris Lieutenant has one wound. One wound? You kill the Primaris yeah. Lieutenant. Yeah! Oh, the big Turan effects. Ooh. Eight, I believe, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we need what's... Six is. Need sixes. All we need is five sixes. Okay. All we need is five sixes? Just That's five. it? I mean, not a single one. All right, he's dead. Yeah. All right, three lieutenants. big ones on the venom throats. Three big blasts on the venom throats? Yeah, we need 10, so they're dead. On fives for the repulsor. So two saves, so I take one wound. So seven, I have three blast markers. So one, two, three, four, he's good. I rolled trip sixes. So two go through. Swarm Lord's leadership is, or save is five. He's only got two wounds. He's good. Boom. Yay. 
That's what you get for throwing a knight into him and not Kalgar. Catch the cream. Three large. <laughs> need it in stitches, so you just need to make one Wait, of them. Exocrine only has three large? Only has three large. Oh, come on, Exocrine. We just need one. Ah, didn't make a single one. Perfect. Exocrine is lifted. We have the Repulsor Executioner uh, with a sweet, sweet five up. Uh, two large blast templates, sorry, two large blast markers, so sixes and then one small for five. Uh, none of them, so it takes three. Three wounds, yeah. and up it comes. You rolled two large ones, or two small yeah, ones large? failed them all. Yeah. Oh, uh, the other squad of um, infiltrators has got one small and two large. Digging for sixes. They die. Okay. And then yeah. Malice Scepter's got one, two, three big ones. Five ups, and he only has three wounds. I need to save two of these. Nope. Oh, he only saves a small one. Uh, three big and a small. Hey, look at that. He didn't sit, says he only got two wounds. Oh, oh yeah. so close. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Hormigaunt's needing a 10, so that big one goes through. Yeah. Two wounds, so keep him alive. Need a six. No, I need 10. Oh, yeah, a 10. Sorry. A D6. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Ooh, uh -oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah we, we took a bunch of big guys off, so I feel okay. That whole back row is gone. Uh, I think that's it for damage, isn't it? Turn one is done. Both sides have taken losses, but the big guns are still on the table. That's not for lack of trying there either. There were a lot of blasts both on the Reaver and that Bio Titan, but command assets and the unit stock rules make these models really worth bringing to the table. Maybe I will build that Phantom Titan in my closet after all. Ooh, nowhere near as much stuff died that I thought would die. You think, oh, uh, well, we just shot the Titan into a, a Bio Titan, the Bio Titan's gonna die, but it didn't. And now I'm like, and they're halfway up the table now. That means next turn they're gonna hit us. And like, we, we, didn't, we didn't bring enough guns. To summarize turn one, both teams have scored an objective point, making our score at the end of the first turn one to one. The units destroyed so far though, the Tyranids have lost a Venom Throw of Exocrine, Tyranifex, Maliceptor, and a Venomfex, and the, the Marines have lost Infiltrators, Primaris Executioner Tank, looks like more Infiltrators, and two Lieutenants. Despite taking more losses, I think the Tyranids have more units, so really I think they're in a good spot here. The Reaver Titan has taken a ton of punishment, but it isn't even critically wounded yet. That's a state in Apocalypse that occurs when you're below half your starting wound value, and it limits your efficacy for the rest of the game. Turn two should absolutely prove interesting. Rock and roll. Five. A one. Yes. Yeah. Got initiative. Ones are bad. There's marking people who are out. So we out have, of command. We these have, guys out of command. Yep. We have this guy back here out of command. Those and little guys, these guys out of command. Right there out of command. No units currently out of command. Okay. Uh, next up, reinforcements. We've got reinforcements to bring in. It's coming right down into your lines. Oh, yeah. Looking for that three inch bubble, one inch away from you. All right, so setting up some spore mines coming in from Deep Strike. Fly right coming down with them as well. Do you guys have anything Deep Strike? Deep strike at all. It's, it's over. No, like, okay, we got nothing else to deep strike. They don't have anything to deep strike. Draw your cards. We are commanded. So are we. So before anybody flips anything, uh, we are going to use the Apocalypse Psychic Power Scryer's Gaze. Yeah. Uh, so I do have a Psyker unit in my army. So he is going to gaze into the future. And I'm going to. Oh, just wait. Do we oh. have to be in a certain distance? Nope. 
no, we're gonna shout out to the warp that on a two plus, it doesn't happen. Like on a D12? Yeah. Uh, no, I think it's a D6. No, pretty sure it's a 12. No D6, well one D6 on a two plus. Oh, okay, well it's not that crazy then, but okay, it's a two up? Two up. It just shuts it down. Just shuts it shuts down. It well, down. that's outrageous. You wanna take a look at some of our orders and kind of get a one up on us, and I figured, you know what? No, let's just keep it in a secret. We don't want them to see what we've got. So I figured, you know, Tyranids, they mess with the warp. Let's use that Shadows of the Warp. Let's mess with their Psychers a bit. Yes! Oh, the future! I got it off because you failed that. This command asset can be used in the order space after all orders have been issued, but before any of them are revealed. When used, select one Psychic unit from your army that's on the battlefield, blah, blah, blah. Manifest this power. Then I select up to three enemy detachments that you have. You have to reveal those detachments' orders, and then I can replace the orders issued to any of my detachments. I'd love to see what's going on over here. Um, so let's go with um, yeah. So I'll go with that one. Uh, so both both of those hive tyrants detachments. Charge and charge. So they're getting super aggressive over there. Yep. And then let's choose, we know what's happening over here, I imagine. Let's choose this detachment in the middle. I want to know what's going on here. Okay, well, they're getting really, really aggressive. Okay, also at the beginning of the action phase, we're going to medical supplies, pick a light unit, remove D3 damage markers from that unit. We're picking those gene stealers back there. Whoa, what? And they're back to full. Do we want to make any changes? Like, do we want to, um, I'm going to change, on how that gonna change goes, this yeah. to an advance. Maybe move some of our mobile walls into the way. Brood Lord's unit is assaulting. Shocker. Tyrannophets and shooting guys are gonna shoot twice. Big guys back here are gonna also take, take aim. Take aim. One to shoot, right? Yeah, yeah take Sorry, aim. they're taking aim. Uh, Old assault. one iron crew are gonna assault. And that's everybody. And our two surprises over there are also assaulting. Good lord. The change that we made, uh, the super heavy detachment uh, is going to advance. Uh, Gulliman's detachment is going to advance. Reaver Boy is going to take aim. This is our Librarian's detachment is going to advance. Calgar's detachment is going to advance. Uh, Hellblasters are advancing. And finally, our Infiltrators are advancing. He's the terror from the deep. When this unit uses the Deep Strike ability, you can set it up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than one inch away from any enemy units instead of nine. After setting up this unit using the Deep Strike ability, if there are any uni enemy units within three inches of it, select one of those units and roll 1d12. On a three to five, place one blast marker. On a six to nine, place two blast markers. On a 10 plus, place three blast markers. Oh, it's only one unit. Calgar? Yeah. Calgar. Oh, he tries to eat him. He just comes out from underneath the these three. rogue big guys going after the, each other's generals or something. Yeah. Five. One. I believe that is one. He takes a blast marker. A blast. Okay, so before we get going, orbital debris. Just like in the first turn, orbital debris has dropped again, and wisely, after Brent's rolling last turn, Team Tyranid has let move and roll for this one. Much, much more effective this time. Your turn next for the orbital debris. Mm -hmm. We're gonna activate the unit that just, or the detachment that just dropped in. Starting with the Hive Tyrant, he's going to take his 32 inches of movement. Oh yeah, he's charging girly, man. Cause he can make it right in there. We are, however, going to burn the Apocalypse Command Asset, Trophy Kill. This command asset can be used in the action phase. When used, select either the enemy War Master or one enemy Super Heavy unit. Until the end of that turn, you can reroll hit rolls for attack made by your units that target the selected unit. Because now, he's not so happy. He's gonna smite Curly Man. Oh! So, in action phase, when used, select one Psyker, Hive Tyrant. Roll a D12. On a D12, on a two up, Place one blast marker on the closest enemy unit within 36. He's base to base with Girly oh, Man. big time, yeah. And on a seven plus, place two blast markers instead. Excellent. We will try and deny the witch. You can try. We can try. On a two up. We kind of failed that. We succeed. No. We right. succeed. All right, all right, I see how this is. I see awesome. how this is. Deny the witch. Yeah, whopping one attack. 
Hitting on a two. Uh, That'll hit. Seven. Nine. Right. That'll do. One little blast marker. That was super effective. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, our activation, I'm gonna av activate the Swarm Lord's unit. Okay. Because of his Warlord trait, he can leave combat and get back into combat. They certainly can. They can move twice. Do you want to start with the Hormigons? We have six attacks times two. So a total of 12 attacks. Okay, so I'm assaulting into the night. 30 guys to 12 attacks, hitting on fours. Four. And now the Swarm Lord into Kalgar. With his four attack. One. Ooh, only one? We are going to use, we're going to use the Lethal Miasma this command asset can be used after making a wound roll for a Tyranid High Fleet unit from your army. When used, re-roll that wound roll. Can we do more than one? Two. All right, I'll take it. So it's two big blasts? Yep, two big blasts. On Kalgar? On Kalgar. Let's take this Redemptor Dreadnought, and uh, this Redemptor Dreadnought is gonna take its Redemptor Fist and just slam it into the Swarm Lord. And then Kalgar, the champion that he is. Okay, so Kalgar. Two attacks against the Swarm Lord, let's do this. So two hits. All right. On sevens. So one blast marker on the Swarm Lord. Not a destroyer? Not a destroyer. So the Fist of Ultramar are not. It's just uh, two attacks. All right, all right. I'm gonna activate the Warlord Battle Titan and unload everything into um, the Commander Hierophant. Hitting on twos, eights. So two big blasts, that would be one. Having that thing shoot at you and only do one, I'm cool with that. Four, so two big. Two bigs. And finally, the Belakos Volcano Cannons. The Beluga Cannons. <laughs> Welcome, Andy Rolls. So two hits, two ups. That's both wound for Apocalypse to Destroyer, so that's gonna be... Four big. Four bigs. Okay, my activation. Your I'm turn. gonna activate over here, the... Broodlord's pack. Broodlord's unit. Okay, uh, six teenage oh. movement. One, one unit of 20 Gene Stealers in the Photos Marines. Photos Marines. Photos Marines? Photos? Phobos, Phobos, Phobos Marines? Phobos, Phobos. No, they're Photos Marines. Okay, Phobos. they're not a tactical squad. Twos. Twos? Oh. Gene Broodlords right there? Oh yeah, because the Broodlord. So nine. Gene Stealers head like personnel shots. on sixes. Well, they're just gonna move all that. We knew that. Smokes. Yeah, we knew that, but still. Six. Holy smokes. Okay, so, so three, three big large blasts. blasts. Now the other unit of Gene Steelers into the one lieutenant. And on sixes. Dude. Six. Six again. Into the lieutenant. Uh, that's a captain. 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 So three large so blasts. Dead. And then the brood lord, how many attacks does he have? Hitting on twos. Both hit. And on fours. Two, one more big blast into that unit. Wow. Okay. Your guys' turn. Gene Steelers are nuts. Like, nuts. Calgar, two attacks. Gene Steelers, 10 attacks. Twice, isn't it? Twice over, because, well, they had two, I, oh, right? And then the Broodlord gives them a bonus. Ooh, Goleman does Destroyer. 
I love it. Bio Titan is go all three Bio Titans. He's gonna unload everything into the Reaver. Going into, yeah, yeah. So, Frenzy Metabolism, and we're going to go ahead and unload into the Reaver. Two big blasts from the first one. Second guy. So five more big blast markers, and he's gonna do the same thing all over again on twos. Oh, take one out. Five more. All five. 12 large blast markers, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, real, what is this from, the bios? All three bio titans, they're dire cannons. Holy smokes. I'm activating the Reaver Battle Titan, and he is going to launch his apocalyptic missile launcher into the leaderless gaunts. Not the leaderless gaunts. And everything else into the blasted okay. Titan. Okay. Apocalypse missile launcher. Uh, heading into the gods. Twos. Uh, one blast. One blast. Melta. What's it called? It's called the Reaver Melta Cannon. Four shots. Heading into. Big guy up front. Yeah. One so that's one four destroyer wounds. So four big blasts. <laughs> All right, four more big blasts on him. All right. Did you go last? Yeah, you I went last. last. So okay, my turn. I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna activate these guys. To shoot, uh, you're a titan, right? Titanic? Yeah, he's titanic. Okay, so I'm gonna shoot into them. Two small blast markers onto these guys. I think I want to clear this objective. You hold this objective right now, don't you? I believe so, if it falls standard holding, I, need to, uh, I, I want to yes. clear this objective. Okay, so Eliminator Squad into them. Three up, hits. Other Eliminator Squad will do the same thing. Nope. These Eliminators up here? Yeah, Eliminators. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go the aggress, sorry, the suppressors, and we'll take their auto cannons. We'll send uh, one set of auto cannons into them. The into, the, into the Hormagons. So suppressor auto cannons into the Hormagons on threes. Oh yeah. Oh, that that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. On eights, whoosh. Uh, one. So, so we just we'll turn blast. that into a, a big blast. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's all I can. That's all I can do. Knight charging with yeah, one eye. You can go twenty-four. He so smashes four. the overpass down onto the one eye. Yeah, boom! <laughs> it's time for the damage phase. Okay, so to start off with him. We're gonna start off with super heavies. Uh, we're gonna. Oh, God. We're gonna armor or contempt him. So we had to roll on D12s. Boo! That is so crazy! Like, you can do it to a Bio Titan? Yeah, you did. So and three, three ups. So ones and twos only. Two wounds. Yeah. Three wounds. All right, I'll take it. Ugh. I'm deeply frustrating. This is not. I am deeply frustrated as well. Synapse. Nope. Oh no, it's not. Sick. Can it die from this? No, no just take on. If it fails, it takes another damage. Uh, it's gonna fail no matter what, unless you roll a one. I think that's yeah, heroic. D6, you need to okay. roll a one. Yeah! <laughs> Who can roll one? ones? Come I on. can roll one. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Just let us kill it. Just one. Just give us one. If you're gonna give him something to kill, it's gonna be yours, and you gotta roll it right now. You're next. Yeah, right. This thing's dying. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're on D6s, and I need five. I can roll D20s, right? Uh, no, no, you need 11. Ah, uh, there's 11. All right. Let's do this. If you would just kindly fail all of these as well. Play on, sucker! Huh. Oh, that's not bad. I see three. Three of them. Eight. eight. I take eight. Eight wounds. Eight damage. Uh, roll a d6. Actually, you have to hit a one. I have to get a one? You need to roll a one. Child's play. Don't do it. No, I, uh, yeah. I didn't do it. Another damage. I didn't do it! It takes a total of nine damage. He has uh, four wounds remaining. 
Reaver Titan's got four rooms remaining. L Knight, sure. He's a five up. He's got what, two, three, four big blasties on him, right? Four big blasties. I'm gonna use my ion shields, which sees me one. One gets through, he takes the damage. So, Miss Miraculous Escape, okay. to take that one off him so he doesn't die. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll just remove this whole unit. This unit's getting routed. routed. We killed something! Yeah! Oh, come on, leave me All right, you guys' are turn. Yay! Uh, yeah, and then us. Uh, so then I'll move over to this uh, pri uh, Primaris Captain in Gravis armor. He's got one small blast. He's just gonna take that. Uh, uh, he's gonna take that. So he takes this guy takes a wound. He doesn't have two wounds. But he, the Primaris captain. Uh, are you sure? Positive. I can't roll over ten seven times. Sure. So that unit's dead as well. <laughs> you destroyed this unit of termagants over here. Okay, on the Moloch. One, two, three, four large blast markers on the Moloch. Sick. Ooh. What's his? Um, so at least two sisters. No way. Nope. One six. So I'm not dead as well. Out of town. I'll just bring him over myself. Oh no! Swimming. That is the magic of Gulliman and Astraeus. It's a scissors. Back to you guys. I'm so tired. You know what? So am I. <laughs> it's turn two. What's Swarmlord's armor save? Swarmlord's got what? All of one wound. All of one small blast. The Swarmlord needs a five up. Oh, he takes it. Swarmlord's now got one wound on him. Yeah, let's uh, let's see if Calgar lives. Calgar's got what? Two. I can't really. Hold on. There's a Titan in the way. You might, I, I need some. I need some eyes. One, two, two large, one small. Okay, two large, one small. Let me do the honors. Calgar, Calgar's my favorite. I love him. I love him even more than Gulliman. What is he? Need? Oh yeah! Something Sick. Two large blasts on the Hormagons. They're dead. No. We got two hive tyrants. Start with this one. Uh, start with the one in the back. With Catalyst. Yeah. I, I, so on a four up, he's going to ignore damage. Yeah, yeah didn't have him. Uh, so five stitches for wounds. Oh, he saved two, so he only takes one wound. Sweet. So one damage. I one like damage. it. I like it. And then damage. on the other one, five stitches as well. Two, two bigs, one little. Okay. <laughs> Save them all. <laughs> Atta boy. And I think the last save we've got to take is on that spore mine unit. <laughs> Oh, we have ones on spore mine? There is a big blast marker on that spore mine unit. So that goes through with There's one six wound? of them. Two wounds. They will take a damage, but they don't run away. They have synapse. Fly it right there. Nice. Good old fly it. So we lose. Uh, looks like recording into the wee hours has taken its toll on Team Ultramarine, and they have conceded the victory to the Tyranids this day. With the Tyranids pressing hard into the Imperium and that Reaver about to fall versus three Bio-Titans and a swarm of teeth, it's probably the beginning of the end for the Ultra Smurfs. Sure, the Warlord is still alive, but I gotta think the way these Nid players are rolling them that those Gene Suiters may be able to even bring it down on their own. Two more turns, they would've been tabled. That's how I feel. <laughs> you know what, overall, I think the Tyranids did well. We got fed pretty well. A little disappointed that we didn't get to kill off any of the big Titans, but next time. We got them next time. I feel fantastic. That was so much fun. I, I really loved the flood of, of, the, of the bugs coming towards. We thought we could hold them off with a few like infiltrators and it just failed. And they <laughs> got caved in so hard. It was great. It really brings the cinema of what Armageddon is supposed to bring to us. Uh, I, was, I was so stoked to be part of it. It, it. it had no bearing on my enjoyment that we lost. Oh, I mean, being such a fan of the Emperor himself that I am, Dad's gonna be pissed or lost. <laughs> With a really hard fought battle. It was a great fun. Yeah, yeah it was great. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That was fantastic. Yeah, great. Good game. Ooh, nice. You played us. Yeah. Those gene sealers are scary. They're yeah. terrifying. <laughs> right, these things are nuts. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Special thanks to our players, Team Tyranid, Moobin and Brent, and Team Ultramarine, Steve and Tycho, and also to the Garage Games and Geekery for the recording space. Until next time, play on. Oh, come on, guys, that's my line. Make sure to check out our post-battle review of the Apocalypse system with our players for a more in-depth look at what we thought of the game.